Good morning, God's blessings, Esther's Crown Prayer Wall, family, friends, God's blessings, good day, this is the day the Lord has made, footsteps ordered, brand new mercies, fresh starts, new beginnings, um, he says, ask and, and I will give you, ask, I'll give you whatever you ask for in his name, according to his will, be done unto us, so that's what we're coming today is Seeking him, his heart, his provisions, the will of the Father, seeking daily bread, provision, thanking him for the day, and just uh, coming into agreement for all the needs of one another and of our nations, too. So I'm not going to be on here long today and tomorrow. Um, keep in mind on Saturday and Sundays that I do have a ministry, like physical on location teachings and a Bible study, as well as um, gatherings, fellowship gatherings. So Saturdays and Sundays, you know, we've been going. The only reason I bring it up is not because we're not going to be on here a decent amount of time. I mean, to me, even prayer coming together 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes is in the spirit. It's it's very, it's huge. All right. It's a big, it's quality time because um, God hears a few words from the heart. He hears tears from the heart. He hears the many words, but it's the same when it's from the heart. Um, the Lord, he hears that way. So Saturdays and Sundays, just try to keep this in mind. I know for sure we're not going to be able to go as we've been going during the week, an hour and a half, because I do have to commit those days are committed over to ministry and fellowship in the in our location building um so here right here in our neighborhood so um in our city so i can't stay on as long so that's just a given and i don't want to start much earlier because that's just gonna throw us off with trying to land on that 9 30 commitment so maybe less about um expounding on the word and just more geared towards us going into prayer on Saturdays and Sundays. So that's United States time, Saturdays and Sundays, 9.30ish, and we're going to go less. We can't, we can't go an hour and a half on that, only because I have other engagements. If I didn't, we would definitely stay on here. And I am praying more and more about taking this on to Zoom and stream yarding it into the other platforms meaning um, YouTube and um, Facebook. I believe if we StreamYard Facebook, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it automatically will pick up Instagram, maybe, because the Facebook and Instagram kind of co-partner together. Um, again, I'm not sure, but we are going to be looking into this. I, I do believe Zoom is the way to go with a... Um, we have to learn it, of course, but being able to stream it live at the same time on the other platforms and also hopefully learning how, I guess Zoom records, so learning how through Zoom to get the recording, um, you know, to like get a link to that after in case we do have to put it over to, uh, take it over and put it over to Facebook or something. So, or YouTube, I mean, because YouTube, I'm not real sure about how all this works. I just know a lot of people are doing it both in ministry and just in business and stuff. And I would love to do it because I believe that, you know, we don't have to be live with our faces, but even like this picture line of Judah, um, that can be my, um, you, you have a video on zoom. I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with it. But you, we, they give us the option to have a video off and a video on and an audio off and an audio on. So what we would do is set our um, audios off and have our videos off, unless you want them on, of course. Um, and then um, if, we're, if we want to pray out loud or one of us wants to, um, you know, open up in prayer or just inviting conversation if we have, you know, the ample amount of time for that, then we'll do that. Um, so we'll see one, one step at a time, but let me say this for others. Uh, there's several on here on Facebook that watch this from the background and don't ever comment and don't want to be seen. You can still do that because what I'm going to try to do is it's, it's 
supposed to be able to go on Facebook at the same time. So it'll be the same thing. Like even if you don't want to sign on to Zoom with me, you can still stay on Facebook. Now, let me just back this up by saying it's something that I'm um, like intently looking at, but it's not something that I can say 100% we're going to do. I like the thought of it. I believe it would make things work better, smoother, um, that the prayer atmosphere and time of prayer and replays and everything else would be a lot easier. Um, I don't know if you know or not, but you probably do. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning a lot as I go. If somebody is not signed up for Facebook, this is why I, I upload the videos onto YouTube. Um, well, first we download it to the hard drive used to be my cell phone, but it doesn't work anymore. So to the lap, laptop. And then we then I upload it over to YouTube. Because if they are not a Facebook user, they cannot access the prayer wall. They can't access replay. You can even send them a link to Esther's Crown Prayer Wall and they can't open it unless they belong to um, to Facebook or Instagram. And something about like a lot of people you know, not all, many, but, you know, several people, they don't want to be on social media platforms, but they will watch YouTube videos. So that's the point of that. And if I was to post a, like, say we have a website and I'm to post a YouTube link into that website, then anybody can open it. Like anyone that they just click it. If I post a Facebook link on there, they can't unless they belong They've signed up for Facebook. So that's some of my um, thoughts and perspective towards moving forward in a direction of what I'm talking about would be to um, to be able to share those links. Like if you're led to or I'm led to or we do eventually get a website for our uh, ministry. I, I used to have one. I, <laughs> I crashed a website. Okay. It was beautiful. It was awesome. It was amazing. And one click of one delete, it wiped the whole thing out. And it was nowhere saved at that point because of whatever I pressed that messed it up. So I just didn't go back and build it again um, or have anybody build it yet. We're going to work on that. And you'll be able to access more things, write, teaching writings from Sunday sermons, um, you know, uh, word of the day. I used to have all that, like a lot of you that didn't know me or several of you back, you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years ago, I had a whole wall of blogs and um, daily devotional. Every day you could open up to a fresh word. I mean, there's there was a lot going on. And, you know, once I realized how easy you could lose everything, <laughs> I just didn't build it back up. I, I went on to just Facebook and stuff. So we will look into that. Um, we'll see how it works. I do like the whole idea, like a lot of people... Why don't you just go to YouTube? I do like that idea a lot. I, I really do. But we have built more on over the past few years. We've built it up on Facebook. So um, that's why I don't want to just totally go over to a different platform. But here with technology, um, the world, our government in the United States and different things like that. And the way these different um, carriers and providers and uh, you know CEOs and everything of these platforms is going you know we have to live it day by day too because we don't know what's going to happen so amen amen and amen he's a talking this morning isn't he all right let's see who's here yeah good morning Lauren good morning I have zoom and have used it before awesome I have it, you know, I have Zoom because I get on my um, my school, my night school, and um, my intercessory prayer calls are through Zoom. And it's kind of funny because I don't know much about Zoom other than typing in the, the um, ID and then the password and joining into what they're all already doing. So as, as far as launching one and stuff, I don't know. We'll see how that goes, but... Yeah, I have it too. Um, I'm not very user friendly with it as far as um, all the features. I hear it has a lot of features and 
it's a great place for meetings, holding meetings, almost, you know, the next, it's virtual meetings, so it's not as awesome as being face-to-face -face or being in a building, but it is the next closest thing I hear, so, all right, so we'll see, just keep praying in that area, because I would love to do it, but my, here's my mindset, and maybe I need a new mindset, but I have a mindset that if it's not broke, or just, you know, totally outdated or whatever, then don't fix it. You know, don't, don't mess with it. I mean, fixing it, meaning don't, like if, it, if it's working, leave it alone. That's kind of, because I've seen over just on a natural law that when you start messing with something or replacing something or, you know, getting into the new, it's like some people, they have those old cars and they keep them. They, they have them in mint condition. You know, they refurbish them and everything else because it's easier to replace the parts. But now, you know, you get to the point where that that's even getting challenging because the parts are no longer, like even in the junkyards, available and stuff. But, yeah, that's my mindset. It's, it's there. And maybe I, God needs to, I need to let God in to revamp that a little bit. But I've, I have always been like that. Like if it is not broken or just totally outdated, if there's no reason to, 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 you know, change it out or get rid of it, then just leave it alone if it's working and everything's okay with it. So, so yeah, you got a lot of people are into the latest and greatest and, um, you know, they want to updo every year with a cell phone and things. And, and I'm not saying that that's that I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. My, I just have never been, um, a person that thinks that way. So yeah, pray for me there too. Cause if that's what God has, that's what he has. I think for right now, though, hands on and just being able to get in and and, uh, and pray is just amazing. I, I have to thank him every day because what I used to do alone, you know, he's now opened a door. Speaking of that, um, real quick, and then we're going to read and pray. Crystal had a vision last night. We had worship prayer um, in our place of fellowship. That was our meeting place. Like we gather Saturday and Sunday. I forgot about that. We also meet Fridays. Um so those days are just kind of given over to ministry. But she had a vision, and she said she wasn't sure what it was at first, but then she realized it was Esther's crown. And it was actually of the preparation process of a queen. Like, she didn't know who it was or anything, but the whole preparation of what a, a woman goes through um, to be prepared, and then she saw where the gown, um, the beautiful long gown, and and then the crown went on, and and that's when she realized, oh, this is Esther's crown, and you know, you guys know that that's the ministry that God put on my heart, the name for this, the prayer wall, um, is Esther's crown prayer wall. So she had that uh, that vision in worship last night, and we were in worship and prayer Friday night. And she saw it and then immediately went into Ruth gleaning, you know, and of course that's, um, we know what Ruth did for, I mean, her heart was towards Naomi. Like there was no dividing that up. And, you know, she went out there and uh, God richly blessed her, Boaz, and just, oh my gosh, she, Ruth, yeah, <laughs> she became mightily blessed. I mean, mightily blessed because of her loyalty and her heart to do to serve Naomi, to do anything for Naomi, and and Naomi, and um, Ruth was like, "Where you go, I go." You know, I, your God will be my God, and I believe that was because Naomi, you know, for a young lady to say that through the loss of a husband, through the loss of two sons, it didn't look like Naomi could actually be trusted. You know, in my in my perspective as a reader reading into the story um or listener into the history event of how it went it wouldn't seem to me that a young woman now yeah she was married to her son we get that so she grieved the loss of her husband and her father-in-law and you know and then her brother-in-law and all that but I believe it was more than that and that's like outside of her being married and being part of the family there was something that Ruth admired about and knew about Naomi, like beyond because Naomi, Naomi at that point is like everything failed. I've got to go back to my hometown 
And you know, even in the beginning of that story, it's it's um, Naomi's husband that leads them away. You know, it was it's you look at it back in especially in those times, the husband was the decider mainly, and and that's just how it went. So you know, he was a big part in leading the family, and then um, you know, she's like, you see the transparency in Naomi that you know this was a this was a move that has brought nothing but sorrow and destruction and you know so where she wanted to just like set her daughter-in-laws free her daughters like she didn't i don't even want to say in-laws because she treated them just like daughters and they became her daughters when the sons passed away but where she just wanted to set them free and let them go and have lives and she's like i have no more sons to give you like there is no more that could come from me to give you for you to stay with me and um, so that's, that was the beautiful part of where Ruth's um, affections, loyalty, and, and you look at it, I don't think it's just because Naomi had, you know, it's not because she had a car and, you know, you know what I mean, and, and a jewelry box. It was, I believe it was because Ruth had spent so much time under Naomi's watch you know, hand to hand, um, in that day, the women brought in, you know, for food and different things like that and, and making up meals and preparations for the husbands and the family. And I, I believe they shared in such a, a special relationship that Naomi modeled something to Ruth, like from God, there was some, you know, cause it was, cause Ruth's, Ruth's confession was your God will be my God. So she saw something in Naomi that came from Naomi's heart serving God. And, you know, Ruth didn't want to let go of that for, for nothing. I mean, she was like, no, I mean, I, it almost in the story when I read it, it almost um, gives a visual that Naomi is pretty much kicking her out and telling her, get away from me and stuff like that. So very beautiful. Anyway, Crystal's vision um, ended. It went from Esther's crown and then went into Ruth gleaning and gathering up, you know, gleaning the sheaves, like bringing in the sheaves. So we talked about that a little bit this morning. Um, excited about our prayer time and our prayer wall and just what God's doing in the preparation of, um, I believe, even of, of more intercessors because or just being um, clothed. You know, there's garments for the intercessors. There's a special calling for that. Well, I like what she was saying because when you think about it, like, um, especially Esther, the vision she had of Esther, Esther was an intercessor. That's what Esther, I mean, she called a three-day fast with fasting and praying. And, I mean, three days called her, her all her people to fast. And not just that, but as an intercessor, even outside of prayer, we know it as one who steps in between and stands in the gap and like an attorney that goes or a mediator. So she did that in between, you know, her, her people and the king and his answer where the problems were all at in between that she stood. She, the preparation was there. So yeah, if you look at not only was she a queen, but she was God's mediator, God's, um, you know, chosen one to make intercession, to stand in the gap, to fill in a void. You know, what is set up? One queen out, and here comes God's intercessor, the one that's actually going to stand. You know, Jesus refers to himself as making, you know, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession, position there. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, read this. I'm trying to finish my coffee in the mornings now because we have this 12-hour uh, um, a day fasting going on that is more Daniel. Um, it's not a full fast. I haven't done one of those in a while. <laughs> Used to do them all the time, but it's more Daniel fasting now, so... If you want to join in, if you'd like to join on, we're going to, we're going to keep it going. Um, we started January 1st and keep it going specifically through the month, maybe 40 days, but we're definitely 31. So 
um, I had one lady go, why don't you do it 12 hours night time so you get eight hours of that and sleep time. And I was like, no, no, we're not. <laughs> but what we're doing is 12 hours during the day of just um, fruits, vegetables, and, you know, beans, legumes. Um, I, Crystal invited in the fact that we can have nuts, um, whole grain, uh, wheat, things like that. And you can, you know, dressings, you can use dressings, um, just not oil-based, of course, oil and vinegar-based. Um, French fries are on there. A lot of, I remember when we used to do this in the past, French fries are potatoes. Yes, they're, because people are looking at Daniel as completely, like, healthy. So in a healthy diet, you cut out fried foods. Well, in the Daniel diet, or Daniel fast, it's not a diet, in the Daniel fast, um, when you look across it, across the board like olive oil different things it wasn't so much that they had an option to fry the foods and they you know they're not breading it we're not breading it so i'd say you know look into your own personal convictions but at the same time understand that it is a potato and you know we're not taking it and doctoring it up with um, bread crumbs and you know putting all kinds of special seasonings and dippings and all that other stuff so that is an option, and that's for some of, I think that's more for us that are on the go, because um, we don't want to get, you know, weak, or especially if you're on medicines, or there's a medical condition, you know, just uh, use wisdom there. But if you want to join on, um, I mean, you can do, there's a lot of things invited in, um, oatmeal, um, you know, berries, grains, um, yeah, a lot of things, like, and, and with us, you can cook the vegetables, you know, it's a, uh, you can do like a, a brown rice with some, uh, um, oriental vegetables, you know, steamed or, and season it. There's, I, we use sea salt and pepper. So yeah, if you want to join on now, if you don't feel you can do 12 hours, then ask God, pray, do half of it, six or eight. You know, but if you want to come on to it, we're going to do it, and it's corporate then, meaning, you know, two or more. Um, I didn't feel led to really invite anybody this year. We do corporate fasting, but I was just, this was more something I was dedicating to the Lord and um, trying to eat better. Because I know what he told me. He put on my heart that it's supposed to be a lifestyle, but I, I'm a year past that. Yeah, I think it's a little more than a year past him putting, no, about a year, past him putting that on my heart to actually incorporate this as a lifestyle. So, but we're getting there one step at a time, one day at a time. So you are welcome to join in. Um, if you're questioning what a Daniel fast is or Daniel eating, um, you can just Google search that. And I, listen, I do vegetable soups. Um, you know, I put that sometimes on rice. I do. We do steamed vegetables. We do salads. Oh, my gosh. You can eat salads all day long. <laughs> and they're wild. It's like, how much more salad? But, um, yeah. And, you know, just look into it a little bit. Smoothies, fruit bowls, fruit cups, orange juice, apple juice. Um, lots of stuff. So, all right. So, God is good. And God is good all the time. Now, something came to my heart, and let's see, let me share First Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to identify a little bit of a warning, not to instill fear, but to get our attention on something that I believe the days we're in. Uh, First Peter chapter 1, I know it's 23 through 25, and it's about the enduring word. The enduring word, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and which abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you and even going into chapter 2 um, verse 2 as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that by which you may grow thereby so 
this is what came to me this morning. I was um, kind of humming the song, Sarah Groves, When the Saints Come Come Marching In. There's different versions of that. Hers is just um, When the Saints, I think. But anyway, um, she says, "When I want to be one of them. Oh, when the saints come. You know, are the I don't want to go to the old school version. Hers is a new rendition of it. Um, but it's older. It's just she did a new updated version. So, um, as I was humming that song, I said, Lord, I go, what is going to keep us in the times we're in? Where is it where we see the biggest falling away for believers? Like, what area is it? And a lot of it, what the Lord like brought me into and my understanding is that a lot of believers that believe in Christ and come into salvation that don't have the fruit of the word like the like here um, the grounded um, the enduring word like that don't have what it takes under their belt you know they say like um, the belt of a boxer you know a wrestling person they don't have what it takes underneath that belt well that belt is truth and truth is God's word. So um, I was asking the Lord, like, because we know we're in evil days. Like, we don't even have to, <laughs> we don't need anybody to just tell us that. Like, we are in some evil, wicked times. And we know that. And the word says it's going to be like that. So, you know, it's already prophesied. But I guess the, the question and the, you know, our ammo for us I was like, God, I know we suit up, we dress in the armor, but for those that are really struggling to find the truth, to actually walk in the light and stuff, I said, God, what? Like, what? what is it? Is it more prayer? Is it? And this is what I saw, is that the transformation being transformed, not, not conformed to the world, being transformed by the renewing of our mind. So, like... The word of God, more than ever, that's what's going to sustain us. That's our bread. He said, the bread of life, the bread that came down from heaven. And John says the word became flesh. So even in the wilderness, what was sustaining them, because the laws, remember, God gave Moses the laws, but the laws couldn't keep them. That's why Moses, you know, broke them all up and stuff. He was frustrated and he had to go get another set of them, but the laws could not keep them. You know, and so God, the provision coming from heaven, the manna that rained down from heaven. So, you know, that God, the word, he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. You know, he'll always um, provide for us. So, so for us now, spiritually, now let's fast forward. End times, perilous times, dangerous um, evil people, they're calling evil good and good evil, like on a, on a regular scale, not just randomly at Halloween time or, you know, during, um, upheavals of, um, politics and voting time and seasons, they're calling evil good and good evil daily, daily, like hourly. It's accepted. It's been like fashioned into our society, what we believe, the culture, everything so that's what I was seeking him for and I could just see it the word like there is no there was a time we might have not have been able to you know well we don't study we don't read our Bible it's okay we can just stand in the presence of God during that service on Sunday but see the problem right now is yes there was a time that that could carry us and and grace always has us we're gripped by grace we know that but the times what what was influencing Jesus when he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the influence of evil, of the suggestions of Satan himself, the evil was, you know, so that's what was influencing him. So what did he come back with? What won that war? The word. The word won. And listen, Jesus wasn't alone. It says he was led up of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never left him. But it was the word that was coming out of him, the truth of the word. Because even in the influence, see, see, Satan even tried to throw scriptures at him out of a 
wrong intention, a wrong motive. That's why the, the, you know, when the Bible doesn't produce, the word always produces. Seed always produces. If it doesn't produce, like James says, examine the motives while we're asking. Examine, you know, the motives of the person that's, that's trying to deliver the word. You know, so again, you know, what God showed me today and, and what I know to, to be true in my own stand and walk with him in 2000, you know, 20, 21, 22, is that he is leading me into more word study, into reading the word more. Like this is more and more and more. So I, I hunger, a thirst, he's like, like never before. And I can't do it by myself and you can't do it. It's the Holy Spirit that led Jesus and it's the Holy Spirit that's going to lead us. But the mandate and the time, what is needed, what, you know, we say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. So what is needed right now is the word. And, and I, I mean, I just know it like this morning I was like, and you know, I'm not, you know, there's those, Hey, when I was a kid, they were like, read your Bible, read your Bible, you know, read your Bible. Read. We're not talking about that, right? No, I'm going to say this, know your word, know the word, eat the word, live the word, because here it says it even right here. You and I are born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which will abide forever. So all is going to fade away. Evil is going to have its place. It, it, it will. Evil will have its place and it's not going to be around the people of God or God's creation. When it's all said and done, there is no more interfering with the people of God or the creation. There's a lake of fire and that's where evil's going to be. Okay, but right now, the flesh, your flesh, my flesh is as grass. And all the glory of us, things we accomplish, things we do, all of that is as a flower of the grass. And now the flower, the grass is going to wither. That's even in our old age and time and wear and tear, should he tarry. And that the, the glory of whatever we did or it's going to fade, it falls off. But the word of God is going to endure forever. And this word is, which is this gospel, which has been preached. So we didn't even come to know God except for the, through the invitation of the word by an anointing, by his spirit, unless the Holy Spirit draw, we can't even come. And it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance and then to grow. How do we grow? We, we read this in uh, first Peter two, two is by desiring the pure milk of that word. So purity. You know, we don't lose the simplicity. So yes, there was a time when they said, read your Bible, read your I had this, <laughs> I read something from a girl, read your Bible. But more than that is to know the word. Like reading, yes, and, and hearing ourselves read, knowing it. I, I feel like God wants me to just say this over and over I don't know for how long but to get through the times we're in and to actually stay on this side of God you know not lose our way how many Christians right now are just prodigals or strain wandering not going to church anymore losing heart not saying their devotions not you know, fellowshipping with like, like-minded believers, making excuses for bad habits, you know, just writing it off to, well, I've been forgiven anyway, and God understands. I don't neglect that God understands everything, but his heart is in truth and purity and honesty and sincerity and our progress. Amen. So that's what the Lord showed me today. I know it's a little bit of a, um, an eye awakening, an eye opening to our spirit. But the Lord says to be sustained in the times we're in with everything going on. You know, Jesus said your enemies will be those of your own household. And his enemies were those in his own hometown. 
those in the church that called themselves temple leaders and stuff. You know, Peter denied him. Judas betrayed him. They sat at the table and, and you know, supped with him with bread, his body and Passover meals. And he shared all the mysteries of God with them. And, you know, he did, I will tell you this, and this should be an eye-opening revelation to both you and I, us. He said when Judas betrayed him, he said, the devil has entered into you. And when uh, Peter denied him, he had said, the devil is going to tempt you. You will deny me. Just Satan desires to sift you, Peter, like wheat. You know, at one point he had to, and it wasn't even anything terrible, but he had, he referred to him and called him Satan. So, and there's other stories. It's not just, there's 70 plus disciples that followed him no more because of what he was about to walk through and explaining to them that they had to partake to be his disciple. They had to understand and partake in, in his death. You know, he said to, to his disciples and he said, you know, as us as um, disciples and offspring, you do do this in remembrance of me because every time you do this, you are like proclaiming my death until I come. So we're receiving of the finished work of the cross. We're, we're confessing and admitting that Jesus Christ did this for you, for me, over and over and over again, as many times as we can do it. So that was the word, is in order to endure and be a good soldier and stay on this side with God, we have to know the word. Yes, read our Bible, read our devotions, listen when we can, hunger and thirst, you know, pray. Some people say, well, I don't have a desire. And, and I know I've been there before where the devil just passivity entered in and complacency and, you know, and I actually, I didn't have a desire for anything, anything particular because he, the enemy had taken away something that was God given, my appetites were towards a bunch of things, but nothing was satisfying me. Seeing God, when we're positioned, um, the strategies of God are contentment, like to make us contentment, content, because godliness with contentment is great gain. So when we're satisfied and we're content, we're actually gaining. We're gaining them when we're, if we're, we're dissatisfied or, you know, so, yeah, so that's the word. In the days, a lot of people are like, what, do, what are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? My emotions are all over. My mind is being tormented. My body is going through. I still, I'm still having, I'm believing for my smell to come back. So, you know, my body, this is people, my body is like um, not the same since COVID. So there's a lot of stuff going on and, and that can tempt us. That temptation is crouching at the door, you know, I mean, temptation is in when we walk out and, you know, somebody cuts us off in traffic or says something ungodly or doesn't want to do their job when they're, the, they're in between us and our answer. So temptation is always there. So here's the word. Here's the answer to know his word. And it doesn't mean we got to sit there and read it in a year. I already messed up again <laughs> every time. I have set out to read the Bible in a year, follow one of those programs, probably 15 plus years and have never been able to do it that way. I've read it all over the place, scattered and sometimes one book, many times one book, but not to actually timely do it as a discipline daily. I'm going to read these chat and I know I admire people that I've, oh, hey, it's a desire in my heart that I actually can do it that way and, and um, study it out like that. I've done the chronological, not every day though. It took what was supposed to be a year Bible reading, took me like three, four, because <laughs> instead of like, I don't know, it, that's a long story. But my point being is um, we're not, we don't need to do it that way necessarily. If that'll work for you, yes. But on top of that, you can't just, I can't just read we can't just sit there and read and read and read. We actually have to um, know it. So we can grab a hold of some um, Psalms or some of Matthew or, you know, into Thessalonians or Peter, what we just read in First Peter, and actually chew on that for a while. Get that as substance, as meat, as manna, desiring that milk, um, that meat, and just allow the word 
um, to be an expression of who God actually is in the times we're walking in for us, for you, for me. So, Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you're bringing us a now word. A now word that the way to be sustained, the way to get through these times we're in, 2022 and on, should you tarry, is in knowing your word, is in being acquainted with the revelation, the knowledge, the understanding. God, I pray right now that the eyes of our heart be opened in our ears, that as we read scriptures, whether that's from cover to cover, you know, cover to back, or from chapter to chapter, book to book, day to day, however you bring it, God, that more importantly than the timetable or putting an assignment on it, God, is that we align our hearts and affections with interpretation, God, with impartation, with just a hunger, a thirst, a passion, a desire that when we take John 3.16, Lord, that it'll come off of the, the, the ink off the page and into the depths of our hearts of knowing that you so loved it all that you gave, that you're a generous giver, that you already gave in the face of, of darkness and continued darkness that you've told us to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to pursue you with passion and intention. You've given us the instruction. You've empowered us with your Holy Spirit, with your presence, God. Now fill us, Father, with everything that we need to equip us, with to come forth in faith, to come forth in strength and boldness, to prosper us. You said you sent your word and it prospered and what it was sent forward to do that no word returns void may we walk in that with you in a faith place god in an agreement relationship sons and daughters children belonging to a father who doesn't quit who doesn't give up who doesn't fail who doesn't fall asleep who's generous who's who gives and gives and keeps on beyond what we could even ask for from generation to generation. God, you remain the same. There is no darkness in you, only light. God, we pray this for us that will be kept by your word, the knowledge of, of study and learning. Open up the mind, our intellect, our subconscious, wash us clean. May the mind of Christ come forth, being renewed in that place of reading, of learning, of sonship, of being daughters, of, of standing as ambassadors, reconciliation. God, right now, I just pray a promotion as we stand here before you, a spiritual promotion that you just lift us up. You said you're the lifter of our heads that you renew our vision, that you put in us an upright, clean spirit, a clean heart. Yeah, we pray that, Father, that we'll be able to serve you, follow you. When we look in the mirror of your word, that we'll see what's needed and we'll answer for ourselves according to your purposes, aligning ourselves with your spirit, with heaven's plans. Yes, Lord, we say yes. Your mighty hand of forgiveness upon us, this generation, all of your creation from the north, south, east, and west, everything under the sun, everything here in the earth, in the world, fashioned together. God, your will be done. Your kingdom come as it is in heaven, from the youngest to the oldest, richest to the poorest, newborn to the senior crossing over, the animals in the fields, in the highways, byways, in our homes being blessed. God, bring favor, bring bring people and, and, and uh, systems and whew, organizations, God. Raise us up with ideas that reach beyond the glory being the flower of our flesh of grass, but into the heart and intention of how you feel about your animals, of serving them as we serve you. 
not only them serving us, but us serving together, God, that you've given us the steward, the place of stewarding over them, God, stewardship to your creation, all your creation, unborn babies. We just call them forth, God, may laws and be established and organizations come forth and callings in us, ministries, businesses. May we start things, God, from the heart of who you are, not being ashamed, being ready, ready to defend, ready to protect. God, creative ideas, just right there, the blueprints of heaven. God, we want to be your hands and feet, your voices, your prayer warriors, your intercessors, your disciples. We want to be those who serve you in the earth, who are steward well over the talents that multiply and increase the wellness of who you are, the goodness, the concern for the children, God. Those children that are being violated, those children that are being neglected, even in the homes or parents that don't know how to provide or be the parents they need to be, God. We just pray coverings over them, Father, that you... Yeah, that you set the captives free and not just a, a freedom coming and, a, and, and like, yeah, an arrest of the evil, justice prevailing, not just that, but a recovery, God, a cleansing and washing away, even with the animals when they fear and they duck and tuck, wash away the residues, God, on all your creation where there's been abuse, neglect, violations, God, just wash it, cleanse it, Father. The women in domestic violence, marriages and relationships and the men, wash it clean, God. Wash the memories clean. Widows being renewed and, and having friendship and finding newness in the day with you. Creative things there, God, and orphans, their families coming, coming face to face with families that are going to love them and care for them and treat them as their own, God. We pray that the resolves into the senior centers and the nursing homes and assisted living, that you'll bring friendship, God, that you'll stir up, Father, the places where there's weakness, where there's um, named um, viruses and diagnoses, God. Yeah. Cleanse these areas, Father, in the holiness and the miracles and signs and wonders of your provision. Heaven's angels, host of heaven, flood the earth. Yes, come, fight against the unseen forces of darkness. Gather together for those that are to inherit salvation and those that are in inheritors for the plans and purposes and answers, God. We just thank you, Father, angelic host and armies assigned to each one of us and our loved ones, family members, nations, cities, states, schools, your mighty hand upon the school systems, God, even the bus drivers and janitors all the way around, the mothers that, that do the PTA meetings and host the neighborhood watches and those that are, yeah, God, bring an awareness. Fill in the blanks with us. Fill in the gaps. Hands and feet, laborers going forth, using us, special agents on assignment in the marketplace, in the neighborhoods, in the highways, byways, jungles, woods, fields, mountains and valleys. Flood your creation with heaven's gifts, heaven's response, the windows pouring out into this generation the the need god just the answer to every need the provision the daily bread we just trust you god you're you're our god of multiplication of increase of more than enough of supernatural abundance of rain of harvest of generational blessings of miracles and signs and wonders we pray your answers into every heart every home every marriage and family yeah, to the prisoners, to those who sit in jails and county courthouses and our government, our leaders, the churches, right now to the, to the missionary workers and God, to the hospitals and the clinics, Lord, just a, a miraculous cleansing, answers, provision from heaven, 
manna rain down into every heart, God, every home, the breath of life, into all your creation, Lord, north, south, east, and west, the prodigals, the waywards and strays, backsliders, those lost souls hearing the message coming forth, God. We pray, God, as intercessors for heaven's plans as it is there. So be it here, God. Have your way, your mighty hand, your great results. God, the desires of our heart coming forth in the measure that supersedes humanness and human responses and measures, God. Increase us like Samson with strength, God. Solomon with wisdom, Lord. Paul with, with just surrender, full surrender, Lord. Yeah. Peter with talents, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Deborah with that that mantle to be able to accurately divide and stand as a woman in leadership, to judge accurately, to honor her husband in her integrity of, of being, the, having the mantle of possessing what God is giving, the Esthers, the Ruths, the Naomis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Anna in the temple, Lord, proclaiming, prophesying. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you today. Bless each one, God, out of the abundant goodness of who you are, not because of us, God. Everything you do is because it's who you are. Good, good Father. Father of good gifts. Father of lights. One true God. Name above all names. Lord of lords. Prince of peace. King of kings. Thank you, Jesus. Raise us up to stand united in agreement. Your army, brothers and sisters, keepers in prayer, when our hands have something to give, Lord, may our hearts not hold on. Teach us how to forgive quickly. We just pray that spirit of forgiveness, that place of healing, the surrender to your cross, God, the blood covenant. We plead the blood. We apply it. We proclaim it right now. We speak to evil and we say the blood of Christ be against you and every weapon be informed. Stop the forming in Jesus' name. We arrest and bind all evil in the precious promises of Christ, in the blood covenant of agreement, in the power of two, saying no more over our marriages, over our families, over our homes, our jobs, our careers, our walks with God, our churches, our government, our neighborhoods, our nations, our children, our unborn babies, our seniors, our animals, all the, everything that has life, yeah, all of creation. We stand and arrest the evil right now in Jesus' name, covering each one of us, robed in, in righteousness, robes, crowns, kings and priests, giving honor, bringing the kingdom, bringing the kingdom, the joy, the righteousness, the peace, the fruits, delivering one to another, the word of God, the will of God, speaking to one another, the word says in psalms and hymns, making melody in our hearts. Yeah, thank you for your promises, God. May we be the letter that's delivered in, in the truth of the, of the gospels, of the message, written epistles, living, living right in front in lifestyle and obedience, full surrender, God. If there be any unconfessed thing, any rejection in us, any denial, a place of obstinance, unrecognized. Lord, have your way from the crown to the soul, spirit, soul, mind, and body, a washing, a flooding of your grace and glory, a filling, an increase into wisdom, knowledge, revelation, truth, healing, virtue. Armored up with our keys, soldiers sold out for you, yeah, enlisted into your word, into your spirit, God. More of you, less of us. Every need being met, God, according to your 
good glory, your good grace, your good purposes, how it is in heaven, Lord, we agree, Father, even in justice and judgment, that it's pure and accurate because it comes from you, God, that where correction is needed, Lord, you'll hold us in the palm of the hand, and your hand is your, as you make the way in our wilderness. You said you correct those whom you love. You correct those who are your children, God. Hold us and steady us as you bring the truth into us. Reveal what is truth, God. Wash away what is error. If there be any blind things in us, any way that we don't see, any unlearned thing, God, settle those places today in the awesomeness of who you are, God. Good grace, good glory, great God. The great I am, omni, everywhere, Holy Spirit, gift, protector, guarantee, comforter, teacher, friend, you're welcome here. Come, Holy Spirit, make the kingdom known to us. Reveal our Lord and Savior in spirit and truth to us through the word, through the revealing, through the unveiling of heavenly matters, of Father's heart, of the truth being just told to us in spirit and soul and body, worshiping him by renewing us an upright spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for provision and daily bread. Your word is life. Thank you, God. Your mighty hand upon each one of us. Your healing forgiveness on our hearts and homes and lives. Every relationship com coming under the scope of heaven. Yeah, right there the courts of heaven. Let heaven decide. Let the courts of heaven hold the decisions. Grant us that mercy, that justice that is there for each one of us that comes according to you, God, one true God. All the saints of heaven, the cloud of witnesses. Thank you, Jesus. We worship and honor you, your mighty hand. Pray for our enemies. Have your way into the enemies, God. Whatever you have for them, Jesus, we say yes to loosing. We loose them, God. Have your way. You decide. It's your place, God. It's your kingdom, your home. Our hearts, your home. Have your way, temple being templed by you, God, owned and possessed by holiness, righteousness, true judge, our Father, rule and reign in us, God. We give you today and we praise you. Thank you, God. Full recovery. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless each one, seal and settle our prayers. Thank you for hearing us. Awesome God, wonderful King, your majesty. Hallelujah, praise. Forgive us. Forgive our family, our friends. Merciful justice, righteous glory. Praise you, Jesus. It's not your desire that one perish, not one, but that all would come to repentance. Thank you, Jesus. Make us the head and not the tail. Favor going in and favor going out. Sevenfold returns right here for things stolen even from generations prior. The riches of your glory, the wealth. Yeah, the wealth, God the power of authority and agreement, knowing we're heirs and joint heirs. Teach us what that means to own and possess everything that you transferred to us through that cross, through the blood covenant of DNA, Christ life, Christ glory, one with you, no separation, sincerity of purpose, honesty of heart, clarity, vision, Plain, written on the tablets, write it down. The vision, make it known, plain, head and not tail advancing us. Yes, God, 
hundredfold returns on the seed, the word in us, even today's word, that we're to know the word, that we're to walk in the wisdom of it, honor it, read, study, increase in the word, revelation in our lives and in, in the earth through us, God. Yes, Lord, daily bread. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Seal and settle our prayers. Be with us. We love you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. God's blessings. I felt like I could keep going, but like we said, Saturdays and Sundays, we do have to trim it down a little. Um, but that's okay. Just as powerful, I feel. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for your hand upon the nations of the world. And all your creation, everything that has breath, experiencing you today, God, in us, in our homes, miracles, signs and wonders, your provision and your answer to each one of us, God, as an extension of you to those around us and all we cross paths with. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Lifter of our heads, God. Praise you, God. Yes, Lord, yes. All right. Love you all. God's blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ready for class. Me too. Woohoo. <laughs> I've been ready. Two weeks off was two weeks much. <laughs> all right. We'll see you soon, Lauren. God's blessings. Okay. Thank you for being so faithful. The Lord rewards you and Crystal for your faithfulness and also for, for everyone else on here. God bless, reward you, answer, be good to you. Wrap his loving kindness around you as favor and protect each and every one of us from all evil and harm. No evil befalling us or our dwelling places. Only God's goodness to us that he may prove what it is that he's doing in each one of our lives. Yes, Lord. May grace abound always and favor be to all of us. Thank you, God. All right. Love you. Got to go. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.